What's the perfect number of exercises that you should do in a workout? Watch this. Our next caller is Angela from New York. Angela, what's going on? Hi, how are you guys? Good, we're Good. great. All right. Good. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, so my question for you guys is see if you could possibly explain um, the ideal number of exercises per workout. I just finished the aesthetic, which I loved, um, but I was a little surprised at how many workout, how many exercises were in each full body, um, which I get it. Obviously, you're doing, you know, every body part you're hitting, um, but, you know, you see so many things online, focus on the basic exercises, get stronger at them. So I was just looking for a little bit of more input on that. Yeah. Was this your first program you ran of ours? Yes. And what, now, mm -hmm. what did you do before this? Like, how long were you consistent with your workouts before following MAPS Aesthetic? What did those look like? Like, how many days a week were you working out before? So, I've worked out five or six days a week for probably 10 years, maybe. Um, I've worked with a trainer. I've done, you know, fitness competition. I'm actually certified as a trainer, so I typically just do um, all my own programming. But I do... I've done splits. I typically do a few full body days a week. Um, but usually I would say like the calf stuff, the, the shrug, things like that. Um, the smaller body parts I wasn't always including in my workout. Okay. Now, how were your results with aesthetic? Did, were you pleased with how your body responded and how you felt? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and I wanted to ask those questions because sometimes people who follow like MAPS Aesthetic, for example – they go for the program with more volume um, and it's not really the right program for them. But being that you worked out, you've been working out for so long consistently, you competed. It sounds like um, you said you're certified. So you know what you're doing and it worked for you. Um, I think that that's there. Your answer is kind of right there, you know, cause the answer to this question is really hard. It really depends on who I'm talking to and it depends on their performance and the results that they get. Now maps aesthetic includes three full body workouts that have a lot of volume but that's only three workouts in the week. The other two workouts are these focus sessions that last like 20 minutes. So really, if you look at the total amount of volume, it's not crazy in comparison to other types of splits. Now, as far as total exercises in a workout, again, that really does depend. You know, I, I know people say, oh, don't work out more than 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. Uh, that's, that's totally not true. It, it really does depend on the person. And you really have to base it off of how you feel and how it's working for you. And if it worked well for you and you got good results, um, I think you're on the right track. Well, that's part of why the first question I asked was if you'd ran any other MAPS programs. And a, probably a better question is what Sal said, which is asking you what your experience was. And normally I would tell a client, don't start on MAPS Aesthetic. It's one of our highest volume programs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we wrote them in the with the idea of people following anabolic performance and then aesthetic. So you know, taking them almost nine months to actually get to that type of volume so they work up to it. But uh, like Sal said, you've been training for, you're you're an exception to the rule where if you were a client of mine, I'd say, yeah, we could go into aesthetic first. Now, I don't think it would have hurt you though to go uh, anabolic performance and then aesthetic either. I think that uh, still has tremendous value even for an experienced person like you. But you're a case where it would still be okay. Whereas if you were a brand new person, you just started lifting and you jumped right into aesthetic, I'd be telling you, oh, well, that's that's a terrible program. That's too much for someone like you because you haven't been training, but that's not you. So it's okay. The other thing is uh, aesthetic can be long workouts. They can take some people almost 90 minutes to get through it. Nothing is wrong. We just actually had a question similar to this, uh, but the issue with them was time. They just, you know it's a long time to be in the gym. And so there's, there's nothing wrong with you taking a few of those. For example, you've talked about the shrugs and calves, maybe some of the smaller muscle groups, nothing wrong with you moving those over to focus days, which are only 20 minutes long and extending the, the focus days to more like 45 minutes to an hour. And so you'll have an, an even, you know, hour workout or so for every day of the week versus these higher, longer, you know, higher volume, longer workouts, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the uh, off the other days, focus days are only 20, 30. Nothing says that you can't take some of the exercises from the foundational days and move them to uh, focus days. Yeah. Angela, you know, here's something to maybe pay attention to, and you're a perfect person to, to talk to about this because you've been training for so long. So you're, per, you're, you're, you're likely very in touch with how your body feels and performs. I know I'm doing too much in a workout. If I start to notice that my pump is my ability to get a pump starts to fade. And also if it starts to feel like 
an endurance workout versus a strength workout. Like if I if I'm you know th- two thirds of the way through the workout and I'm I'm like oh my god I have you know four more exercises and I gotta like mentally get through it and it's gonna be grueling and it's more like I'm you know just kind of toughing it out then I know this may be a, a little bit too much. And the other one is how you feel after the workout. If I feel like I need to lay down afterwards or take a long break because I'm wasted. I probably did too much. If I feel good after my workout, like I should, I, I, what I aim for is when I'm done, I feel more energized than I did going into the workout. Mm -hmm. Then I know it was enough. So I I give that advice to someone like you because you're, you're, you're better, you're, you're better suited to judge those things. Really hard when somebody's a beginner, like you say that to someone who starts and they're like, well, I kind of feel like I'm grueling. I'm, you know, toughing through the workout from the beginning or what do you mean energized? You know, I'm tired all the way through and then uh, who knows? But for someone like you, I'd say, Look for those things. And if you do notice that, oh man, I, I don't feel so great, you know, about two thirds of the way through the workout or afterwards I feel like I need to lay down, just try this. Cut one set off of each exercise. Start like that. So you're not cutting exercises, you're just cutting volume overall and then see how you feel. You might be surprised. You might find that cutting the volume might actually get you better results. Well, not to mention one of the first things that you'll see if you are if you are doing too much volume is a plateau. And again, another reason why Sal probably asked you that, how were your results? And if you would have responded, oh, they were okay, or I didn't really see any strength gains, if that was your response, then we probably would suggest you probably need to cut back a little bit. But if you felt great and you saw great results from it, whether that be body composition or and or changing uh, strength or strength going up, uh, you're probably right where you should be. Yeah, and you made a good point on – um, the focus days, because I, it, well, like you said, they would take me anywhere from 75 to 90 minutes on the full body, but the focus, I'm still doing at least an hour when I'm there. So I'm probably maybe doing a little bit too much volume there, but when I ended, so the last set obviously was the super sets the last three weeks and I didn't go too much lighter, but I definitely didn't go heavier for those, obviously, because I'm super setting them. Right. So then I kind of felt like, okay, well, my squat's not going up, my deadlift's not going up, um, so, you know, should I back off and try and increase, you know, basically just the, the volume yeah, well, as far yeah, well, as those the, basic exercises? That's that's new information right there, right? Yeah, so, okay, yeah. now, now, the, now the answer changes a little bit. So focus days are only supposed to be 20, 20, 30 minutes tops. So if you're spending an hour in the gym and you're doing all those foundational days of, you know, 90-minute workouts, you probably are doing a little too much. Yeah. And my recommendation would be follow the focus days as they're written, and if you're going to add anything to the focus days, take them from the foundational days. It sounds like to me you're follow, you're doing everything the program's saying, plus you're adding more on those focus days. Yeah. The goal, the idea is this. You want to do the optimal amount of volume, not the amount of volume that you can tolerate maximally. It sounds like you're going to the limit and going as far as your body will allow you to go. You're only going to get results slower as a result of that. You're not going to hit your full potential. And of course, you're always you're you're probably teetering, if not bouncing back and forth between overtraining and not overtraining. Um, considering your background, that's probably your tendency. And also, I mean, I, I don't know. You did you know focus sessions for an hour? Sounds like you're adding a bunch of stuff. Try following the program as it's laid out. Trust the programming and um, and see what happens. I I would bet you that you're probably going to see better results. Got it. Thank you. That sounds good. And then last question is, what would you recommend I do next? Mm, strong. Yeah, map, map, map strong will be good. Do you yeah. have access to that, by the way? No. All right. We're going to send that to you. So and, and one, one little add to that. Okay. If based off of how you feel when you finish aesthetic would be the difference if I directed you towards strong or anabolic. So I may push you back towards anabolic or even performance, to be honest, because those programs have a little less volume. So if at the end of this workout, maybe you give me feedback as a client, you say, oh, Adam, my you know joints are hurting a little bit or my deadlift and squat have been stuck on a plateau for a while, I might not go to strong. I actually might pull you back a little bit on the volume and go towards anabolic or performance. But if you feel great and you loved aesthetic, you saw great results, feeling good from it, no issues, then I would go to strong next. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel good. I, this morning I test, I just went and did like five exercises and I went up like 10 pounds on, oh. on everything. Yeah. That's great. First, first like five to seven reps, not much, but I just wanted to see if I could do a little bit more. So, I mean, I feel good. My body feels good. I definitely do feel better and more energized when I complete the workout. 
Um, and I know you guys have millions of callers who call and say, well, I'm not going to back off. And that's kind of <laughs> where I fall. Um, so, <laughs> but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem, Angela. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know the other thing too is uh, when you're when you're like this advanced um, and this you know you enjoy working out so much, you can sometimes uh, fool yourself a little bit. So you could be like, "Oh, I went up in ten pounds on my squat," but they went up in ten pounds from the last couple workouts, which overtrained them. Mm-hmm. Overall, they're not up. Yeah, they just took a little break, saw themselves go up. Oh, I'm on the right track now. You know, these are things to really pay attention to because if you're a fitness fanatic, and I'm speaking uh, from experience. You, I do this too. I tend to push my body to what it can handle. Almost not always. Yeah. Almost always. I mean, I would say 90% of the time, if you're experienced, you're advanced, or you've been consistently lifting for years, you probably have a tendency to overdo it. Yeah. If you're brand new, never really trained, you're probably afraid to do too much. So you don't do very much. And so it's almost always the, the opposite is true. But what I love about these live calls is – here we are talking to her. We all give some tips and answers, and it was literally after we all went round robin answering. Then we find more out more information yeah, just comes then, out then magically. All, yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden you say, and you're doing hour long focus sessions. Listen, we wrote those focus sessions to be single joint movements. You know, cables, bands. They're type somewhat of recuperative. Yes, they're not designed to hammer the body. And if she's telling me she's doing an hour, she's getting after it. Yeah. And that, and if there's any, if she's plateauing at all, or there's any issues at all, there it is is she's doing 90 minute workouts on foundational days and then she's coming back to the gym and doing another hour and i bet the exercise selection isn't the best well, either. it's tough because you get somebody like this and i've had a lot of clients like this they get really into it and this becomes a bit of an obsession and it, it's fun and they're getting results but honestly at, at the end of the day what's your goal like where do you go from here right and i always have to like reiterate that because we're at such a high volume right now uh you know it to me it's it's always about like you know kind of bringing them back so that way uh we can work our way back up yeah. and keep you know this this sort of uh fluctuating approach you know what this reminds me of it's it's like this is so common right you get a client and you're like do you have any areas of pain on your body oh no i feel good but you know you yeah. have to go through from yeah. the head down to the feet Step by step to get the real answer. Are, your neck doesn't hurt. What about your shoulder? What, oh yeah, my elbow bothered. Oh yeah, yeah. My yeah but nothing. Kind of you gotta happened, ask a lot of questions, you know? right? Because yeah. I literally asked her what her workouts were like. Yeah. And she told us what I failed to do was to go through each piece and ask her more specifically because yeah. then you start to get the yeah. real answers. Right, mm-hmm. right. Thankfully, she gave us a little bit more information at the end, which allowed us to change well, her answer. And to be honest, now that we have all that information, uh, if she was my client and she she put all her trust in me to allow her to to to, to guide her, I would probably actually make her go to anabolic. Totally. That's what I mean. Yeah. For Not only for, it's probably- the discipline of it. Y- yes. Probably better for a body, but also so I can show her like- Watch this. We're only going to train three days a yep. week. On your off days, you're going to do these little rubber band, easy exercises. Follow it to a T. I'm, and I'm not even worried right now what you're seeing. Strength is just, this is what I think your body needs. Then let me take you to strong or let me take you to another program yep. and then watch your body respond, uh, knowing now what I know from what it is. Because she's definitely somebody who probably leans on doing too much volume. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.